Hi, John with eTrailer. Today, we're taking a look at eTrailer's Class 3 receiver hitch, and we've installed it on our 2018 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. So let's take a closer look at the e-trailer hitch, how it fits on the Mercedes and some of the features of it. What we're looking at is it's going to be powder coated a flat black. Unlike some of the other trailer hitches out there that have a gloss or a semi-gloss finish, this one's flat black. It makes it disappear under the car. And I kind of like the way that that looks on these Mercedes. Um, this is going to be a hidden cross tube style, which means you're only going to see this receiver portion under here. Everything else is kind of tucked back behind the fascia. Now, this is a class three receiver hitch. That means the opening here is gonna be two inches by two inches. Um, and our hitch has a reinforced collar on it. Uh, that's something that I like. Now, keep in mind when you buy this, it's just gonna be the hitch by itself. So if you're new to towing, uh, you're gonna have to pick up a pin and clip. This one takes a 5 8 inch pin and clip. We have these available here at eTrailer. We also have locking styles if you're looking for more security. Um, also, if you are in the market for uh, cargo racks and bike racks, a lot of those accessories already include a pin and clip or an anti-rattle device, so just keep that in mind as well. Uh, this has a wire type, wire loop type chain hanger, and this is plenty of room for your standard S-hook style, or even this heavy duty clevis style fits in here nicely. Now, speaking of accessories like bike racks and cargo racks, let's get uh, some measurements and see how they fit on the Mercedes. Um, from the ground to the top of the inside collar, we're looking at uh, 11 inches. And then from the center of the pinhole to the edge of our fascia here, we're looking at five inches. Now, these numbers are important if you're uh, looking at, say, uh, a ball mount. If you're going to be doing some towing, you're probably going to want one with a rise to it to help keep your trailer level. Um, or if you have accessories like bike racks and cargo racks that have a stowed up fold position, you want to know that those aren't going to impact the back of your fascia here. So let's talk about some of the weight ratings of this hitch. If you're looking for a high capacity hitch, this is going to be it. The tongue weight rating on this one, 900 pounds. That's some of our biggest numbers here. And that's going to be the force pushing down on your hitch. So that's going to be great if you've got a cargo rack that you want to load up or one of those big bike racks, multiple bike racks. Um, as far as the gross trailer weight rating, if you're into towing, we're looking at 6,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's going to be the force pulling on the hitch. Now, this is going to be the weight of your trailer plus anything that you put in it or on it. And of course, you want to check with your Mercedes owner's manual to find out how much weight you can actually tow. All in all, I think this hitch is a great fit on the Mercedes. Um, as far as uh, installation, what's it like to install this hitch on this car? It does get a little bit involved. You're going to be removing this lower part of your fascia. So if you haven't done that before, that might just be um, one of your hurdles. Uh, there's no drilling. There's no trimming of the outer fascia here. You have to trim some sheet metal um, underneath the car. That's really not that big of a deal, but everybody's skills are a little bit different. So um, if you want to see how to install this hitch, on the car or what it would take for a shop to install this hitch on your car. Uh, stick around, we're gonna go pull it in the shop and we'll show you. Now to begin our installation, we're gonna come underneath the rear of the Mercedes here. We need to get these chrome tips off. Uh, you're gonna need a T40 socket. You're gonna have two torque screws that are holding these on. Now, once you have the screws out, you're going to have two tabs. If you back it up slightly, you're going to have a tab here and then one over here in this corner. So to get these out, it's a little tricky, but you want to clear this out. These are the tabs I was talking about. So go ahead and get this done on both sides. I have a cam buckle tie down strap and we could put this and hang it up on the coil springs on the rear because we don't want the exhaust to hang on its own. It could damage it. Um, now we've got ours up in the air, that's why we're using this strap, and that's great. If you are on your driveway um, and you've got the back end up on a, some ramps or something like that, you can just get a block of wood or whatever you need just to support the exhaust, just so it's not hanging on its own. So on either side, we're going to have a total of three rubber isolators that we need to get loose. And I have uh, silicone spray. You can use soapy water too, but the key to this is to get the lubricant 
inside because it's going to make a big difference when it comes time to loosen these up. So you're going to have one on the driver's side here. You're going to have another one on the passenger side over here. Just soak these things. Like I said, soapy water is just fine too, just as long as it gets in there. And then if you follow the exhaust down, you're going to have one more here at the rear axle. I like to kind of pull down on the exhaust to kind of loosen up and get that lubricant in there. Now you can take a pry bar and just pry on this bottom flange on this muffler and this should come off. So we got the one. Now keep in mind I've got this strap tightened already. And if they don't want to come off, try a little bit more soap and water on it. That really just makes the difference. Okay. So our exhaust is loose. Just going to lower the strap down slowly. That's going to give us the room we need. Now you want to grab a 10 millimeter socket and you're going to have three 10 millimeter screws on each side that we need to remove. You can start up here by the wheel well. Move straight back, there's another one on the heat shield. Now our car is missing some fasteners today. You may have a push pin fastener that goes right here. We didn't have anything. But the third 10 millimeter screw that we need to get is actually right here on this side towards the middle and it's the same as the other ones now you got the same exact setup on the passenger side as well now open up your rear hatch and get your uh, floorboard out of the way which is what we've already done uh, grab a t30 socket and we're going to have a t30 screw here that's going to be holding this rear scuff panel in Once this is out of the way, then you can start by prying gently on either side. You're going to have plastic clips that are all through here holding this down. Set this off. These are the clips. We'll be pulling these out and putting them back in this to snap it back down. The reason we're doing this is there's a wiring harness. You're going to see a tiny little tab at the edge here. I'm going to push down on that and that'll disconnect our harness. And if you follow that down, you'll see a grommet here. Just kind of peel it and push it with your fingers and feed it through. Next, you can turn your attention to this wheel well trim. We need to get this out of here. Now, it's going to have, uh, you'll start at the bottom here. It'll have a tab and then you're going to have these clips here. Um, if they're giving you trouble, you can just use a uh, trim panel tool and you'll be pushing down near where this center clip is. That's what holds it up here. Uh, this one came off pretty easy. Uh, sometimes these will give you trouble. Now, if you fold back the inner fender well on the inside here, we're going to have another push pin fastener. It's going to be right here on the inside, but it's facing down. Uh, it's going to be kind of tough to show removing that on camera, so uh, just know it's right here. Okay, we got this out of the way. That's just connecting the two panels together. Once that's done, you'll notice I have blues painters tape here. Uh, this is just to protect the paint from any scratches. You can pull out on this lower fascia and it's gonna be the same types of clips as up here on the wheel well. So just pull out on them. And probably gonna to need to use your plastic trim panel tool Just work your way around. Now once you have that done on both sides, you're going to take your wedge and you can start by pulling out on this rear fascia. This is going to have the same types of clips as the fender well trim. So just kind of get in there and I'm keeping constant pressure 
just using the corner of this wedge to dip down. Okay, now you are gonna have a wiring harness around right here that we need to disconnect uh, on both sides. So don't, pu don't pull too hard while you're doing this. I'm reaching up from the bottom. If you follow this electrical cable right here, you'll come up to a plug. And that's what it looks like. To disconnect it, you have two tabs on either side. I just pinched it and pulled back. So this is gonna be the same for both sides. Then you can just continue working your way along the back edge. Now just keep a good grip on it as you're working your way across. And like I said, this wedge is probably one of the best ones to use on the Mercedes, especially on the back side back here, because it will unclip these pretty quick. Carefully pull it back. Remember, this is the harness from inside. You want to be careful. That's why we like to push it through first, just so it doesn't catch on anything. So once you have this disconnected, set it off in a safe place. Now we need to remove the rear heat shield here. Grab an eight millimeter socket, and then you're gonna have a series of nuts under here that are holding this on. the back. It's left to wiggle the exhaust around. And set this off to the side. Now we can remove the bumper beam. It's going to be an 18 millimeter socket that you need. You're going to have uh, two bolts on each side. with the flange nuts off, you take a rubber hammer and kind of just hit it on the back side. Um, a lot of times there'll be an adhesive or a sealant that's holding this bumper beam on. And just work it loose and set it off to the side. If your gasket looks like this when you pull your bumper beam off, you're gonna wanna scrape this off um, and you can either pick up a new gasket from the manufacturer or you can use a black silicone or that's what I'll be using today. You can use a silicone sealant to seal this up. The reason they do this is that the exhaust is back here um, and this is an open frame. And so you don't want any of these exhaust gases going inside the frame. Sometimes you can pull the bumpers off and the gasket's okay. I've had that happen before, but this time uh, was not the case. So I'm gonna scrape this off both the frame of the car and the bumper. Once you get it cleaned up, you can just run a bead of silicone around the hole here. We're going to do this on both sides on the car. And on the hitch, on the passenger side, you're going to have an opening here. We're going to run it around this as well so that our bumper beam will seal up with the hitch. Now we can take the hitch and we'll set it into position, hanging it on the studs. Try to keep it centered as best as you can. And then let that hang. You could grab your bumper beam. You may have to take your exhaust isolators and point them down. Mine got pushed up. And you could take the flange nuts and then reinstall them on the car. And we'll get these snugged up. You could torque them down. The torque specs are going to be in the installation manual.
Now in the directions, you're gonna have a diagram um, that'll show you how to cut your heat shield, and honestly, it's not the best diagram. Um, what they are referring to in it, uh, what you'll see is that this will be the center point, and they want you basically two inches over from this center point on this side, and three inches over here, and then down. Uh, the picture is pretty good, so if you just kinda copy what they've got for you, uh, it'll turn out okay. Uh, this heat shield can be cut with some tin snips. I'm going to drill out the corners here and here. And then make sure you wear gloves when you're cutting the sheet metal. The stuff will cut you in a minute. Now once you get it trimmed, um, it's just going to be time to reinstall it and this, they really just don't make it easy so you may have to slide it in from the side. So, just get this back up into position and reinstall the flange nuts that hold it on. Now we can reinstall our rear fascia. Um, don't forget we're going to be feeding this through the rear of the frame in just a second, but we'll take the fascia. Now, with the new hitch here, make sure that the bottom part of this fascia goes above the hitch. And then just line up the clips, the fascia, starting in the middle of the bumper, just kind of roll up. Making sure your tail lights go in, make sure all the clips are where they're supposed to go. And once you come over to this side, now would be a good time to reinstall the electrical connector that we took off earlier. And if you're having trouble doing this from this angle, it is possible to access this from under the car. I don't know if it's necessarily any easier, but you can get to it underneath. Just slowly work your way around until you get all the clips back in. I just wanted to show you something real quick where I've had this happen in the past and this is one of those cars. Uh, if you take a look right here, I've got a gap um, and the center of this bumper didn't want to go back in for whatever reason, the face is here. So I've got my arm, just want to let you know, you can maybe get your arm back up here. You can see me pushing back out on the fascia to get this to reconnect. Um, so this should still snap in. But when I was pushing it before, it was just pushing in and not connecting. So I just wanted to let you know that you, if you're having the same problem, you can get your arm back up here and you can actually feel the tabs and manually lock these in. Now we can run this electrical line back up. So I've pulled the whole wire through and to, re in, uh, to reset this grommet, you need to pull it all the way through and that way you can just fit the inside you want to make sure that's in and not leaking anything and then you can hook the connector back up inside one other thing i wanted to mention is when you're pulling out this rear scuff plate um, we kind of talked about how the clips need to be um, with your scuff plate and not in the vehicle chances are these clips are going to break these are like one-time use clips um, if you get some out and they go back into your scuff plate great if they don't um, we have these available in an entire kit here with other fasteners 
Um, and I'm not sure if you really need all of the other fasteners right now for this installation. So you may be able to source these independently uh, online or at another retail store. Um, in any event, just make sure all of your clips are installed on this plate so when it snaps down, it snaps down tight. If they're just in the bumper or in the car itself here, it's going to be loose when you reinstall it. Now, I didn't push down on this yet. You want to get it set into position and get this rear rubber molding on top. Make sure all your clips are lined up and it'll be in there nice and snug and then you can just reinstall your Torx screw. Once you get the panel tight here, don't forget to reinstall the push pin fastener that's holding these two together. Then you can tuck in the fender well liner and this is just going to snap back in. Now I normally like to take my tape off before I snap this back in, uh, that way we don't trap any tape underneath. Uh, we'll do this on both sides and we'll head underneath and reinstall those fasteners as well. Reinstall the 10 millimeter bolts here. working our way around. Remember the heat shield might be a little bent from trying to take it out and put it back in. So if you have to, bend it out of the way. While we're down here, we'll reinstall the plastic rivets back into the fender well. reinstall our exhaust back into the isolators I gave them another spray of silicone and it just makes it easier for these to be reinstalled And while you're here, don't forget to remove the tie-down strap if you used one. Then we can reinstall our exhaust tips. Make sure you hook the tabs incorrectly and then you can line them up before you tighten these screws down. And that was a look at some of the features in the installation of E-Trailer's Class 3 receiver hitch on our 2018 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300.